Imagine you've taken a few days off and you just want to relax, but you get into a traffic jam on the highway, you try to find a different route, you get lost and in the middle of nowhere you stumble upon a small cafe. However, the waitress and the owner constantly want to talk about the meaning of life. This is what happens to John in John Strelicki's novel The Why Are You Here Cafe. And today we're going to take a look at that. Welcome to the Soft Skill channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and today I've got another book review for you. Today we're going to take a look at John Strelicki's the, <clears throat> the Why Are You Here Cafe. Actually, this novel, um, there are two different titles for this novel, the Why Are You Here Cafe or just the Why Cafe. As I understand, this is because this novel was first self-published by John Strelicki and later it was uh, republished by a publishing company. In Germany, this book is quite popular. It was first released in 2007 in Germany and it started to gain popularity around 2015 and since then it is permanently included in most uh, ranking lists and sales ranking lists and bestseller lists and it is really popular, has sold a lot of copies and is very well known. As I understand, it isn't as popular in Strelicki's home in the USA. It has been a bestseller there as well, but it doesn't have the same kind of... Um, it's, it's not such a super famous long seller um, as in Germany. This novel is about personal development, which is interesting because we've looked at Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People before. However, Strelicki's approach is entirely different because he um, has written a novel about the topic. So let's have a look at the plot. As I already told you, John, the protagonist, who is who incidentally has the same name as the author, has taken a few days off. He's a overworked, stressed out manager and he wants to relax a bit. But unfortunately, he gets into a traffic jam on the highway. He tries to find a way around it. He gets lost and in the middle of nowhere, he stumbles upon a small cafe, which is called the Why Are You Here Cafe. John is almost out of gas. It has gotten dark in the meantime. He hasn't eaten all day, so he goes inside. On the menu, there isn't just a selection of common diner items, but there are also three questions. Why are you here? Do you fear death? Are you fulfilled? Now, whether I fear death is not a good question on a menu. Nonetheless, John spends a lot of time talking about these three questions to Casey, who is the cafe's waitress, to Mike, who is the cook and also the owner, and to Anne, who is a regular customer. And those conversations take up most of the book. There is the small introduction I told you about and there are two or three pages at the end and everything else is filled with the conversations between John and those three other people. 
And the main topic of those conversations is the first question. Why are you here? This is about nothing less than your purpose. Your purpose for existence, PFE for short. So what do we learn about this purpose for existence? As Casey tells John, once you really start asking yourself the question, why are you here? It becomes part of yourself, part of your life. <clears throat> Until you found the answer. And once you know the answer, there is a strong desire to realize your PFE, to build your life around it, to um, live your life according to your PFE. Actually doing that is another big, big step and big challenge. But once you've managed to do this, once you live life according to your PFE, you live a happy and fulfilled life. That doesn't sound so bad. A, a very important aspect of this uh, PFE is that you do what you really want to do. Now, this is something rather special because most people prepare for doing what they really want later on, especially when they are retired. And it would obviously be better to do what you really want right now. Anne, who has a marketing background, tells John about a vicious cycle here. Advertising makes us believe that we need things to be happy. So we buy things. To pay for them, we need to work. We are not happy at work. So we buy more things to be happy which in turn we need to work more to pay for and the circle goes on and on. Mike also tells a story to John that most of you have probably heard before. The story of a businessman who is on vacation and who meets a fisherman. The fisherman is sitting at the harbor, uh, watching the sea, relaxed and the businessman asks him why he doesn't catch more fish and earn more money. And the fisherman says, yeah, well, why should I do that? And the businessman explains, you could buy a bigger boat, you, get, you could get some employees, you could get a whole fishing fleet, fishing empire, world domination, everything. And the fisherman still asks, but why should I do this? And the businessman says, yeah, obviously, you would get a lot of money, you could retire, you could do whatever you want, you could spend time with your wife and your kids, you could sit at the harbor just watching the sea uh, as you please. And the fisherman says, yeah, but that is what I am doing right now. Uh, this story actually is from a German novelist, from Heinrich Böll. Um, who wrote it in 1963 for the German Labor Day. And uh, it has often been reused and, and cited. And uh, unfortunately, Strelicki doesn't provide a source in the book. I've stumbled upon a couple of websites who um, talk about this story and they say, yeah, it's from John Strelicki's The Y Cafe, but yeah, actually it's from Berl. Um, so, so far it seems like the purpose for existence means working less. But actually, the purpose for existence itself seems to be a type of work. Um, the one example John Strelicki gives for a specific purpose for existence is to build cars. This comes up when they discuss th some other thing. 
And there is a scene where John asks himself, now what do I do if I live according to my purpose for existence, but I don't earn enough money? And at this point, Casey tells him two things. The first is people who live according to their PFE, people who do what they really want, they are really passionate about this thing, whatever it is. So they spend a lot, lot of time on it, they learn about it, and they get really good at it. And therefore, they won't have any problems finding a decent job. Then she also tells John, with an ironic voice, that um, let's say you uh, live according to your PFE, you do what you want to do each day. But you don't earn a lot of money, so maybe you can save up for retirement. So when you are 65, you can't just stop, you have to keep doing what you really want each day. Would that really be that bad? Now, at this point, I have a couple of questions, but unfortunately, those are not answered in the novel. But we learn some more things about the PFE. For example, that people who uh, live according to their PFE, they perform a lot of activities, they do a lot of things that help them further realize their PFE. And people who don't live according to their purpose for existence, they do a lot of things as well, but they do things that don't help them realize their PFE, so they are unfulfilled and unhappy. And here Casey tells a story to John um, about how she encountered a green sea turtle uh, when she was uh, diving. The green sea turtle seemed to move through the water quickly and easily and Casey had trouble uh, catching up and she um, tired easily and quickly and for the turtle it all seemed to be very easy and effortless. effortless. And Casey figured out that the turtle um, used the waves when the waves rode in, the turtle would just hold its position without fighting the waves. And when the waves moved back, the turtle would move along with the waves and be carried by the waves. And so it could move uh, with very little effort and still move quickly. And the bottom line is, if you um, waste your time and your energy on a lot of things that don't... Um, help you realize your PFE, then you won't have enough energy left when you really get the chance to do things that uh, help your PFE. We also learn that people who don't live according to their PFE fear death, because at this point they won't have any chance anymore to realize their PFE. However, people who already live according to their PFE don't fear death because they already realize their PFE. As you remember, this is the second question from the menu, do you fear death? And the third question, are you fulfilled? You probably caught on here already. If you live according to your PFE, you live a fulfilled life. We learn one last thing about the purpose for existence, and that is that people who live according to their PFE, they are quite lucky. There are a lot of lucky occurrences, good things happen to them at random. This sounds a bit esoteric at first, but there is some further explanation. As John is told, if someone is 
uh, living their PFE and they are really passionate about it and they pour their heart and soul into it and they tell other people about it, their passion will spread to those people and those people will love what you are doing and they will tell other people about it and the passion will spread further and there will be an exponential distribution and in the end there are a lot of people who um, like what you are doing and who will offer you great jobs and great opportunities and who um, have a positive attitude towards you. So if you approach them with any requests, they will uh, easily help you. And yeah, there are a few assumptions here that probably won't hold up to scientific testing. But who cares? I'm looking forward to the exponential distribution of this video and all the great jobs and opportunities I will be offered. In the end, John leaves the Why Are You Here cafe and I know you are all, excitement, all excited, but um, let me tell you, he finds his PFE and he starts living according to his PFE. Now, if you view this as a book about personal development and you just look at the amount of information and advice and theories and whatever that is in here, it isn't that much. It is a rather short book, it has 120 pages, it has a big font and it is uh, not a that large a book. And of course, the fact that it is a novel means that the information is uh, spread out more. So, bottom line, I'd say um, the personal development yeah, materials you have in here, um, it's probably about the amount you have in 5 to 10 pages of the 7 Habits. Regarding the themes and topics that are covered, uh, we find a lot of classic themes. Uh, obviously, it is about uh, what you want to do with your life and your goals in life. We have this vicious cycle thing Anne comes up with. Uh, so we have this uh, theme of people who want to break out of their everyday routine in uh, German we call this breaking out of the hamster wheel. Um, we also have this change of perspective where you look at your own death and you ask yourself uh, if my life is about to end and I look back will I be content with my life. Uh, as you might remember we also had this in the seven habits where Covey asks you to imagine that you are a guest at your own funeral and to imagine what other people would say about you and about your life. So we have a lot of classic themes and topic in the Y Cafe. An interesting similarity between Streliki and Covey is that both approach this personal development, personal change uh, topics in a kind of deterministic way. The meaning of your, your life or the purpose of your life for both isn't something that you create yourself, that you come up with yourself, but rather it is something that exists already and that you have to find. As you might remember, Covey had these basic principles that are like natural laws and that he discovered rather than to create them. And uh, for Streleki, the purpose for existence, um, he describes it rather than something like destiny, something that is already written, that is already there and you need to find it.
In this regard, Strelicki's ideas and theories seem to be rather specific and clear-cut. However, you might have noticed that his description, uh, descriptions tend to be rather vague. And this, of course, means that he can avoid a lot of problems and a lot of difficult questions. For example, uh, I would like to know if someone says, my purpose for existence is being a great father. How does this work out um, in regard to earning money and doing what you really want to do all day? Or isn't this a valid purpose for existence? But we don't ever get to know. Furthermore, Strelicky sometimes gets a bit mystic, a bit, a bit esoteric. Uh, there are scenes where the text on the menu magically changes from why are you here to why am I here. And there are a couple of scenes where the other characters seem to read John's mind. Um, now, what is less obvious but more problematic is that this purpose for existence idea itself contains some magical think thinking. <clears throat> Sorry. Purpose for existence idea contains some magical thinking. Because, as John Strelicky describes it, once you have found your purpose for existence and once you've started living according to your PFE, everything else seems to fall into place so you will be successful, everybody will, will like what you're doing and will support you, the universe will be on your side or whatever. And yeah, I find it rather irresponsible to promise something like that, because as we all know, there are people who are passionate and who pour their heart and soul and all their energy into fulfilling uh, their life stream and they still fail. So, at the end, is this a useless book and everybody should read The Seven Habits instead? I wouldn't go that far. I think the book has its own value. I think soft skills always start with asking questions to yourself, reflecting upon things. And this obviously is a book that inspires the reader to think about his own life and what he wants to do with his life. And um, the big strength of, si of this book is that it is very, very accessible. It is quite easy to read, it is entertaining, it is rather short. I read it in two evenings, so even someone who isn't, who doesn't have a lot of reading routine, someone who usually doesn't touch any books, will have no problems reading this in a couple of days. It's really easy, it's not complicated, it's quite accessible. So especially if you haven't dealt with so those questions like what do I want to do with my life, what are my goals, um, what do I want my life to be like, uh, then maybe a book like The Seven Habits that is rather complex with uh, more than 300 pages, a lot of theories, a lot of depth, Maybe this will uh, be, be too much for you and too complicated at first. And the Y Cafe might be a much better starting point for you. Now, obviously, it's important that you really put some thought into it and that you don't take everything you read here at face value. Personally, I'm not that big a fan of Strelicky. So far, uh, a while ago, I read uh, The Big Five for Life, um, which is another book uh, he wrote. And this one had yeah, several more issues, several more points I found uh, troubling and difficult. We will probably look at The Big Five for Life at a later time in this channel. Now, the, the Y Cafe was more to my liking because 
in the end, it is uh, a feel-good novel that maybe inspires you to uh, think about your life and where you want to go in your life. And that's all right with me. Did you read the Why Cafe or the Why Are You Here Cafe? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to your feedback. If you liked the video, I would also appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure not to miss any future videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. We will see each other next week when there is another channel update. Until then, I'll take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.